Hello and welcome, this is Mouse Gunner, and as part of my first impression series, I'm going to be taking a look at a new game, Dead Cells. Now, full disclosure, I did receive a key for this game from the developers, and the devs told me that they consider this a alpha demo build of the game, so there is going to be content missing, and there may be bugs and other issues that we'll encounter in uh, this look. Now, I did put in a couple hours of this game uh, in a Twitch stream. That is a series I've started on Twitch where I look at some of these keys that I received from developers. This is the first game that I have done that with. So I played it for a couple hours, got a feel for it. And the only complaint that I'll have, I am impressed with the game. The only complaint I, I noticed was a little bit of optimization issues. There seemed to be some uh, stutters and some frame drops here and there. But otherwise, I didn't know any, notice any issues. Now, there, I think there was an update since last I played. So we may notice maybe different bugs. And this game will uh, come out uh, pretty soon, May 10th. So we can expect uh, maybe a... I'm not sure if it's going to uh, enter early access or not. Uh, there wasn't any indication of that and what I received from the developers or or anything. So I don't know this uh, what state the game's going to launch in. It may launch in early access and still have some work done, needing to be done. But from what I've seen, uh, this is a pretty well-polished game outside of the optimization uh, issues I saw. So let's go ahead and hop into the game and see what it's all about. I did uh, start a little bit of a run just to make sure things were working okay, but we'll just uh, abort that and uh, come right back in. And how you start every game is you get crapped out of whatever that uh, pipe system is, and you enter into this headless corpse, uh, which you now have control over. Now, this is a side-scrolling roguelite, and it has... Some uh, similarities, at least in my mind, to Binding of Isaac and Enter the uh, Gungeon, as far as the way the level design works. Not necessarily the gameplay, because this is a side-scrolling game as opposed to uh, the style of game that Binding of Isaac is, for example, where it's more top-down. But the level design is, is similar in that you have the same set level progression, more or less, but there is procedural generation which with these levels. So I don't know exactly what this level is called, but the second level we'll get to is always called the ramparts. But the layout of the ramparts is going to be slightly different every time. Just like the layout of this level, your starting level, is going to be slightly different as well. So uh, it's similar in that way. Now there is a semblance of progression. As you can see, these jars, a lot of them are empty. But the ones that have items in them, these are things that I've unlocked through the progression. We'll see how that progression works as we jump into things. And if we look down in the lower left, these are are all the key bindings. This is something similar to Ruin of the Reckless, which is another game that I've looked at in this first impression series. And I actually really like the fact that these key bindings are here. It shows you exactly what the different items are. So we start off with a attack with our X. So that is it right there. Uh, we don't have anything in our Y slot yet. So this is what we're going to choose. Either we choose a wooden shield or a bow. This is the starting choice. You can change this through progression. I haven't unlocked that yet, but we hit the right bumper to pick it up. And we now have that in our Y slot. So if I hit Y, I can shoot a bow. I could alternatively pick this up and that would enter my Y slot. So now I have a shield. I think I noticed a little bit of a graphical glitch there. That's not something I noticed in the past. So, as I said, I think there was an update since last I played. So, there might be bugs that I uh, didn't see in the past. Another element of progression that you don't necessarily start with is the left bumper. As you can see in the lower left, that is a healing potion. I get one charge of that where I can heal myself up. And then the uh, the thing over in the the far left is a, I think it's an amulet slot. Normally, the item that you start with doesn't really do anything. As a matter of fact, I can pull that up right here. So, uh, actually, no. Uh, is it this? Okay, that's just the map. Because that's the button it's indicating to me. And I'm using a, a Xbox One controller. It does recommend uh, using a controller uh, for this game. But you can use mouse and keyboard. I haven't tried that. Uh, and as I said, it is recommended to use a controller. But we can see what items I have. So I have a rusty sword, which does that much damage per second. And I have a bow. And we see that it has uh, five shots. Now, the way the shots work is uh, interesting in that you see that there's bars. Well, when I shoot, it consumes one bar. But eventually, over time, that bar will, will replenish. So if I sp spam the shots 
I'll eventually run out of ammo, and after a period of time, I will regain it. But it does kind of uh, punish you in a way for uh, doing that. Okay, so if we talk to this guy, this is one of the things that, this is content that isn't in the game yet. So this is somebody that I'm guessing records your game stats. That's not something that exists in the game yet. All right, so as far as the platforming goes, you have a pretty basic jump that you don't really jump all that high, but you do have a double jump. Now, as far as the platforming goes, you will grab onto ledges, and I find the control uh, system to be relatively fluid. Now, you'll encounter doors which you can open normally, and then they will close on their own after a period of time. Or, you can smash the door, just as I've done there. Now, we also smash that uh, little, I'm not even sure what to call it, floating uh, ball of gold, and it gave us gold when we smashed it. And gold we'll use in shops. Alright, so we have some enemies here, so I can shoot them with my bow. And I can dodge roll, and the dodge roll works similarly to the way it does in a lot of these rogue lights, in that it will mitigate damage. Okay, so we have a new item here, and this is going to enter our item slots. So we have a flashbang. If I hit right trigger, that will trigger the flashbang. I can jump down, and I'm going to show you another move you can do. You can do kind of a stomp, like that, and it will stun uh, enemies and do a little bit of damage to them. And you can jump up onto ledges like that as well. So again, we do that, and we just straight up just splat this guy. This uh, is somewhat of a, uh, a gory game, as you see the chunks of their bodies and the splats of blood on the walls. And I really do like the art aesthetic. So again, I can smash doors or I can open them normally. I oftentimes just like to smash the... Uh, so to do this move, I, I jump and then I hit A and down. And it does a little, like, uh, ground pound. There are secrets, uh throughout the game, and I'll try and look for them. Usually they're on floors or on walls, so sometimes you'll attack something and you'll and you'll note that there is a special block or what have you. Okay, so we have a little bit of new enemies to deal with. So this guy will shoot these orbs uh, that it will blow up after a period of time. So far, this early stage is not particularly hard. Oh, I just now noticed there is a timer that uh, counts your time. That is important for what we'll see later on, because there are things that if you speed run, you uh, do uh, get advantages. Now, these things uh, are things in the world that I'm not exactly sure what they do. It says rub, and this happens when you rub it, but I have no idea what this does. And this is a big part of this game, is you're not really given a lot of instruction. Like, for instance, I didn't know this ground pound existed until I just, I did it, and I, I just discovered it on my own. There's also just things like that. W what does that thing do that you rub? I don't know, but eventually I'm sure there will be something, and possibly it's content that doesn't exist in the game yet. And now we see something that I can use my gold on. So if I had a thousand gold, I could open that golden door, and then I could get that item. So what is that item? That item is a level up. Every time you level up, you get to increase a few different aspects of your character. And we'll see exactly how that works when I level up. I can pretty much guarantee you I'm going to come back and get that. This is a Metroidvania-style game, so... Alright, well, that I borked. Let's wait for his attack and then dodge roll. There we go. That's how you, you're supposed to deal with him. I didn't do it quite right. There we go. It's a lot harder to pull that stuff off, though, when you have multiple opponents at once, which does happen. Oh, there we go. So we now have the 1,000 gold. Let's go open that door. And get ourselves the scroll of power, which we can now level up. So I get a choice of three things. I can get increase to health, I can get an increase to strength, or I can get an increase to skills. Now you can see there's a little 1 over top the X and Y, there's a little 1 over the LTRT, and there's a little 1 right next to my health bar over, all the way over in the left. As I level that up, it will go up. So let's just uh, do the health. And you'll see now it says 2 next to my health all the way over on the left. So, and also my health bar increased. The same thing is true with the attack. If I'd taken that, the 1 above the X and Y would go up as well. And then we, of course, would do more damage. Okay, so... I should have probably looked ahead a little bit because we see there's a level up there, but that's specific. It's only health. I only get health from that level up. I don't get a choice. 
All right, we can't stand around here though because that guy's shooting uh, orbs at us. So. These guys can shoot through uh, floors and walls and stuff, so it is something that you have to kind of be mindful of. Okay, so as I said, we don't get a choice there. We just get that level up to our health. So now we have uh, level 3 health, and we're up to 190 as opposed to the 100 we started with. Now you'll notice that there's another thing just above the gold. So if you look over, all the way over in the lower left, you see the gold is 213. And above that, we have uh, something that looks like blue orbs, and it says 8. Those are cells. And that's what we use for progression. And we'll see that as I uh, finish off this level. The teleporters are how you can get around the map. And I'll use that here in a second. Oop. All right, so I'm spamming my shots here. Oh, I ran out of ammo, so... There we go. Just dodge that roll past that guy's leap. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and use this teleporter. Now, I only have one other teleporter unlocked, but if I wanted to, I can do that. And then I teleport over there. And this is a good way to uh, quickly backtrack if you need to. Which really helps in a Metroidvania-style game. Kind of reminds me of Enter the Gungeon. Okay, we have a chest here. Let's go ahead and open it. Get ourselves a... Ooh, I love this. This is my uh, favorite ranged weapon. Whenever you have two attack items, you have the choice of which one you want to get rid of. Because this is a ranged attack, and we already have a ranged attack uh, here with the bow, I'm going to replace that. So, the throwing knife has more ammo, but also has some special effects on it. So, we can see that it does however much damage per two seconds, as you can see, as, as opposed to just a second. And uh, it also has a damage bonus because it's a level two as opposed to a level one. So I'll showcase that here in a little bit. And if you smash a door, you will stun an opponent that's behind it. Let's just go up here to check. Oh, there's a secret. We get a little bit of gold. Another secret. We get a... All right, so you see there's kind of like a bleed effect there with the throwing knife. Let's use our flashbang here to stun that guy. And then as you can see, there's a cooldown on the right trigger ability that I just used. So now it's available again. Now as part of the dodging, I can roll underneath that area. Let's use our flashbang again. Oh, we just accidentally found another secret. Okay, use our throwing knives to kill this guy from range. There he goes. I think there was another one that went this way. Yeah, there he is. Okay, there we go. And we have another level up. I'm gonna go ahead and take the, the strength upgrade. Unfortunately, I haven't encountered any uh, basic weapons, so we still have just our basic attack here. So as I see, you see there, I smash through the door. That is going to... Oh, okay, the shield blocks the flashbang. All right, that's uh, something that I, I wasn't aware of. Ah! See, that guy with the orb is making my life difficult. Because he's making it hard uh, to deal with the shield guy the way I want to. There. Ah, he keeps turning around. All right, let's take care of the, the orb guy. There we go. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of damage. I don't think the damage is as punishing. Oh, I was just talking about a weapon, and I just happened to stumble upon my favorite weapon in the game. <laughs> oh, we just barely didn't kill that guy. All right, let's just be patient. Okay, so electric whip. This is by far and away my favorite weapon in the game. Now, this doesn't do as much damage as the rusty sword, but it has great range. 
And those are the cells that I just picked up there. That was a cell that was just sitting there. As a matter of fact, we've gotten quite a lot of cells. This is uh, uh, not typical for the first level. So we get another teleport. We can jump around as we ch choose. Okay, we got to the shop now. This might be the end of the level. Uh, the shop's not necessarily always in the same place. Okay, I don't want the shield because that would replace one of my X or Y items. We could get the bear trap, which is going to be another item. Uh, it would enter the left trigger that I could use. So this is just going to be something that we throw on the ground. And if anybody walks over it, it's going to trap them for a bit of time. Usually speaking, the amulets are pretty powerful. That would replace the amulet in the lower left that doesn't do anything at the moment with whatever this effect says. So any enemy that touches you is frozen, is the effect. And that's pretty powerful in my opinion. Unfortunately, we can't afford it. I think I'm just going to save my money. It's it's It sucks because we're so close. Possibly, I might if there's still more to go on this level, I might be able to... Uh, unfortunately, no. Now, this is a character you encounter very early in the game. That I'm not exactly sure what his story is, but he's alive when you first encounter him. So we're going to be moving on to the ramparts. I think we saved the money, even though this item here is very tempting and we were just so short of being able to get it. Well, we could always try for a secret. No, okay. Let's go ahead and go on to the ramparts just to show uh, what that's like. But I, this I think is a pretty good run. I've got uh, my... Favorite throwing weapon and my favorite melee weapon. Okay, so this is where we get our progression. So the cells that I have over on the right, I can invest in various unlocks. And the th some of the things I've already unlocked, for instance, the healing potion I've unlocked. I've unlocked gold recovery, which allows me to conserve some of the gold that I had my last life if I die. Right now, what I'm trying to invest in is a healing potion level 2, which would give me two charges for my healing potion, which I think is very valuable. And most of these other things unlocked items. So when I unlocked the first level of the blood sword, that just allowed me to have the blood sword. And when you unlock something, in the run you unlock it, you pretty much get it right away. So uh, that's useful too if you don't really have a, a weapon going. But I think I'm going to go ahead and invest what cells I have into the potion. So there I've done that and we can just go on. So the next part we're going to get to is the refilling station. So if you're wondering why didn't you use your, your health potion? Well at the end of every level you get to refill your health potion but it also will refill your health if you need to. So you do kind of have an incentive to use your health potion at least once in the level, but you don't know exactly at what point you're going to want to use that because you don't know at what point you're going to need it, really, uh, sometimes. Now, there is a way to find health in the levels, but relatively rare. Usually, you're going to be uh, depending more on the uh, health potion you have to heal yourself. If you remember to use it, oftentimes I forget. This is one of those things, the more time you put into it, the better you're going to get at the game, and the more you're going to remember to you, uh, to utilize things. I think the first couple times I played, I was really struggling with the controls, just because I'm not used to this style of game. But I think I've, I've gotten okay at the game. So we're going to take advantage of our, our range attack here. And, ooh, what did we get there? This is a blueprint, so this is going to add into things that we can unlock for later. Okay, we're going to jump down on these guys in a second. I'm going to take care of these guys up top first. Oh, I didn't even know I could throw down like that. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's context sensitive. So when I was over at the ledge... Oh, maybe... Oh, it auto uh, it auto attacks the closest enemy. I, I, I remember reading that in the description. Okay, let's uh, jump down. Okay. Okay, that guy there is dangerous. But now that I know that it auto, I got auto target with my uh, throwing weapon, I'm not as scared of him. Okay. Looks like we may have missed some stuff over here. Looks like I can make that jump. If I don't bork it and fall. <laughs> You don't die if you fall off of uh, ledges like that. Okay. 
Don't see anything else of value outside of the soul that we got. Now, at this point of the game, they oftentimes uh, will throw what I call the challenge area. There's also this area. Ooh. That's a door. I would show it to you, but it's a door that's locked by time. So if you go to the door, let's just do it real quick. It will say, oh, you, this door closed 10 minutes, 45 seconds ago. That's because I did a really slow run. I've gotten close to getting to that door, like being a couple minutes away. But if I wasn't explaining everything to you and I wasn't taking my time and I was really trying to do this fast, if I got to that door in enough time, it would be open. At least that's how I understand things. I actually haven't done it myself. All right, so we got a weapon upgrade. This is just going to, again, not be a choice. We just get that particular level up. So we're level three for our, our attack damage. Okay, there is a teleporter here. So this might be the area I was talking about where it's the, the challenge area. I'm just going to hop down here. Yeah, this is the challenge area. I don't want to do that. Because, uh, from my experience, the challenge area is very difficult. But more or less, it's an area I would go down into, and the only way that I could, uh, progress is by defeating uh, a really tough, uh, elite opponent. And it's really difficult to do, and I've never really succeeded, and I want to continue with this run, so... The chance that I'll die there is very high, and usually in combat, you don't really get a good chance to use the potion, because... It is... You know, it's a, it's a fairly slow item to use. Now, out of curiosity, I cannot... Oops. I can't throw through the floor, so unlike some enemies who can attack through floors like that mage, I cannot. Ah! Alright, so I got a little caught there because there was a lot of enemies. Uh, unfortunately, nothing nothing of note here outside of just killing them. So that was some damage I probably should not have taken. Fortunately, the teleporters are, are pretty forgiving as far as how close you have to be to them. Oh, okay, so we get a skill level up here. Yeah, that looks like a lot of enemies. Flying enemies to boot. Might be a good idea to... Okay, when we manage to get through that, okay. I think I might use my health potion. I don't think it's going to uh, fill me up fully. Oh, okay, maybe it would. But that's using the health potion. It's not necessarily... Maybe that is relatively quick. Maybe I could do it in combat. I just have never really tried. Let's tr attack this guy from behind. Ah. Ah. Let's uh, back off here. Use our... Okay. And we handled that okay. Didn't take any damage. I don't think I took any damage. It's possible I did. Turn around. Stop looking at me. Okay. Okay, yeah, got with the shields blocking a lot of our damage. Be patient here. Stun lock him. Alright, probably should have dodged that. Okay, I, I, I uh, tripped a tripwire there, which... This is where I really love the uh, throwing knives, because they seem to take care of these enemies really nicely. Looks like the, uh, the whip also auto-targets, which makes that a pretty powerful... Pretty powerful weapon to have. Okay, so that's a door we opened down there. Ah, I should have dodged. I was just about to. Okay, 
Okay, we just be a little bit patient here. There we go. Ice grenade, level three, activates. 4.5 seconds recharge time, explodes freezing enemies nearby. Well, we're gonna pick that up anyway because we don't have a left trigger item. Okay, well, so far so good. I am half health though. Ooh, and we find ourselves a secret. So as you can see, the difficulty has definitely gone up in this level as opposed to the previous one. I usually consider the the first level to be something that's easily tackled. Second level, maybe not so much. Trying to... Okay, apparently I can't through the floor. Alright, so the mage is kind of being a dick. Wait for the shield. That's going to be the toughest enemy to deal with. Alright, well there I just died. Alright, well we at least get to see how the progression works. I, th I thought that was a pretty good uh, run through. I haven't yet actually uh, progressed past the second level, but I feel like I did decently there. So, here we go with the progression. And as you saw there, uh, I do get back some of the gold, 25% of the gold that I had in the previous death. And just like before... We have a choice, beginner's bow or a uh, good old uh, wooden shield. Now, one of the progression things that I could have done that I'd like to work towards is allowing the starting weapons to be random amongst the ones that I have unlocked so far. So that all of these things that I have in jars, I could potentially start with. Not necessarily, uh, it's it kind of the luck of the draw, but at least it's better than just always starting with the, the same starting equipment. And honestly, personally for myself, first off, I didn't notice the optimization issues this time around. So it's possible that that last patch, although it maybe had some graphical bugs that I saw here and there, has uh, fixed a lot of that, but maybe you saw it uh, better than I did. Maybe there was still some stutters and some frame issues, but it seems like it's better. Again, the game hasn't launched. This is not going to be the version that you'll see when it does launch in, on May 10th. So I'm pretty impressed. This is uh, a game that really, I presentation-wise, looks solid, but the real winner is the gameplay. I feel like, although it's simplistic maybe in idea as far as you know, you know at times it may seem like you're just mashing the x button but i just think that the combination of all the abilities you can use the fact that it's very dodging uh oriented that you're supposed to be dodging more than i did for sure you, you have your uh, your your secondary attack which honestly it's up to you how you want to do that you can do a shield you can do a bow you can even do two uh close combat weapons if you really want to if that's your style and then you have the items on top of that i think that adds in a lot of complexity and i think that the controls are executed very fluidly and the overall gameplay is compelling uh in that way so i as i said am very impressed with this bit of look that I've taken uh, and uh, I honestly think that it is worth checking out if you're into this style of gameplay if you're into metroidvanias if you're into roguelites uh, I'm pretty darn impressed in any case I hope you guys have enjoyed the video this is Mouse Gunner signing out